Good morning, and welcome to this service of worship. Welcome those who are every day, every Sunday worshipers, those who are visiting with us, as well as our television congregation. We pray that God will bless all of us on this morning. I would like to begin with uh, some announcements which are not on the screen. First, our sympathy is extended to Ginny McGowan and Rick Forsyth and their family on the death of Ginny's mother, Mabel McGowan. She died last evening, and funeral arrangements are still to be confirmed. Also, Clifton, a meeting of your congregation on Tuesday, May 17th, Tuesday, May 17th, at Mo and Joan Wood's house, and I do not have a time for that. Oh, it's on the screen? Okay. I didn't know it was on the screen. That's the new announcement. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Announce an announcement which is not on the screen. The Amabile uh, singers will be, f be performing this afternoon at 2.30 at St. Paul's United uh, uh, Anglican Church. They'll be joined by members of the Atlantic String Machine, and the director is Ruth Ann Reed Clay. So it promises to be a wonderful performance. So that's this afternoon at 2.30 at St. Paul's. And Don Scott has an announcement. Good morning. At its meeting on May 9th, the Outreach and Service Committee discussed the idea of our congregation taking some action to raise funds for Fort McMurray. While many in the congregation have already made donations, it was felt that Trinity Clifton, as a church community, should be doing something. Several ideas were discussed in consideration of the fact that there is so much going on over the next month we reached the conclusion that especially offering at a service was probably the best thing we could do. After consulting with the worship committee, a decision was made to make a, take up a special offering next Sunday, June 22nd. An offering envelope is included today with your bulletin. If you wish to make a contribution, we ask you to return it next week. If you're using a check, make it payable to Trinity. Receipts for contributions will be issued by Trinity the funds will be forwarded to the United Church M&M Fund. They will send them along to the United Church in Alberta, which is raising funds for Fort McMurray. We have all been thinking about the residents of Fort McMurray. This is our opportunity to do something concrete. Thank you very much. So that is an invitation to contribute to the people of Fort McMurray through an envelope uh, to be uh, presented next Sunday or through the address that is on, was on your screen. Happy birthday, Margaret Kaiser, uh, Evelyn Wheatley, Lori Forsyth, and Mary Ann Burke Matheson. We hope you have wonderful celebrations of your life. Today there is a congregational meeting, and you have heard about it. The JNAC report needs to be received. Uh, if it is uh, passed at this, this meeting, then a search committee will be uh, chosen, and that is all part of the process for the calling of uh, another minister uh, to uh, do ministry with Greg at Trinity. So I'm pleased to see that you are here. I hope you will stay for that meeting. There will not be coffee and conversation so that we can proceed as quickly as possible to that important part of our ministry in this church. Lobster supper. You had a wonderful supper last evening, and we're going to eat again, uh, this time with the takeout lobster supper. The tickets are on sale. They're $20, and they can be purchased at purchased at the church office from a UCW member or from the Trinity men. The supper is Wednesday, June 1st, 
and pickup is between 3.30 and 5.30. So if you are interested, please uh, buy your tickets so that preparations can be made. We have three candles this morning for Pentecost Sunday. They represent, of course, God, Christ, and Spirit. Like tongues of fire, the Spirit came and still comes to warm the heart and illumine the mind of the Church. On that first Pentecost day, people gathered. On this Pentecost Sunday, we gathered. Once the Spirit came in, the rush of the wind and tongues of fire. Now may the Spirit blow through us and light us on fire. With the presence on the Spirit, the church came into being. We are the church. Let's celebrate and worship together. God, many years ago, the disciples knew the strength of your presence and the goodness of your spirit. In this time of worship, as we gather together as members of your church, help us to be aware of your presence and uplifted by your spirit. May we be strengthened here in this time that we may feel empowered to follow you every day. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Let us join in singing Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness.
God's Spirit really is a wonderful presence and can blow in wonderful and mysterious ways to move us from our placidness. And a few weeks ago, this group of our Sunday school approached me about sharing with you something that they were learning in Sunday school and felt moved enough by the Spirit to want to share that with you. So through our service today, be open to the Spirit's guidance as they share what they have been learning in Sunday school. This funnel, A or BPA for short, is an industrial chemical that's been used to make certain plastics since the 1960s according, according to the Mayo Clinic. It is one of the many chemicals found in hard plastic water bottles and water coolers. It's been linked to causing high blood pressure, cancer, and childhood de developmental problems. Flimsy water bottles also contain chemicals that leach into the water. Chemicals leach quick, quicker when heated. For example, if they were left in the car in the sun, the chemicals would leach quicker. According to David Suzuki, Canadians drink 2 billion liters of wa water a year. That amount, only 15% are recycled. That means 1,700,000,000 plastic bottles are just tossed away where they pollute the air, land, and sea. As the National Geographic states on its webpage, imagine a, bottle, a water bottle filled a quarter way up with oil. That's how much oil is needed to produce one bottle. In Canada, that means 3.5 billion barrels of oil just to make bottles. According to the National Geographic and the Pacific Institute in Boulder, Colorado, it takes three liters of water to produce a one liter plastic bottle. That's a waste when you can just fill up a glass from your tap. According to CBC's website, plastic doesn't biograde, it photograds, which means that under sunlight it keeps breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces. The smaller bits of plastic are called nurdles the, and enters the food chain eating, eaten by marine animals and birds and eventually ends up inside of us. Plastic is toxic. Let us join in singing uh, 579. The church is wherever God's people are praising, and uh, we invite the children to come forward, forward for children's time during that singing. I love sunny days in May when it feels like summer's almost here. Yeah, and that means summer holidays are coming right up. No more school for two whole months. 
Hey, wait, do you see what I see? What are you talking about, Sophie? I see a mess. Garbage that people just threw out over the winter. Mostly, it's yuck. Old, dirty plastic water bottles. Gross, how many germs are on that thing? Germs? I wonder about more nasty chemicals. Ew. Did you hear about the game last night? It was Tampa playing the Penguins. I was so pumped when Hedman shot the puck straight to Corn, who shot it right to the goal and got it in. It was so sick, unbelievable. Hey, what are you girls doing over there? We're picking up these disgusting water bottles out of the ditch. I wish people would just use refillable bottles like this one. And like mine look what a great idea you guys are so cool super cool i'm going to buy a bottle just like that when i go to town tomorrow really what a great idea Stent, spend tex 10 bucks now save a zillion bucks later but not always dropping by sobeys to pick up another bottle of water you know it's not just about the money it's about saving our planet when you drink water from your kitchen tap and when you use tap water to fill up your own bottle. We're saving so much pollution in the air and in the, in the water and on the land. Plastic re plastic's really bad for the environment. Stay away from it as much as you can, especially to drink or eat, for, or drink or eat from. Our coach even knows that. Plus, look, you guys go to Trinity Church, right? Me too. And like God enters in in Our first reading this morning is taken from the book of Acts, beginning at chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are, these not, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Amalites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pydera and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. 
all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Good morning. The reading, uh, uh, second reading of the scripture this morning is from book book of John chapter 14, verses 8 to 17. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you speak, you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you.
Today is Pentecost Sunday. And though our society does not give this day the same excitement and sense of celebration as we do to Easter and Christmas, we in the church should really not think of this day as any less significant. This is the day that we acknowledge the presence of God's Spirit and the day that we mark the beginning or the birth of the church. On Pentecost Sunday every year, we read this same scripture from the book of Acts. And we hear the wonderful story of the day of Pentecost and its vivid images and amazing events. This reading of scripture, like so many of the ones that we read in worship, is just part of a larger story. We have just come through the season of Easter, when the focus of our lectionary readings is on the disciples' encounters with the risen Christ. And it is really from this place that we should encounter today's scripture. Penta means 50. And there's a reason that in the Christian year, the Christian calendar, that this day comes, Pentecost comes, at the end of the 50 days of the Easter season. Because on Pentecost, we, like the disciples, make a shift from focusing on the risen Christ to being open to the leading and the presence of God's Spirit. So I'd like us to take a little step back back to the beginning of the book of Acts and get a sense of the whole story. Tradition would hold that Acts was written as a second book, as a sequel to the Gospel of Luke. In fact, the book of Acts actually begins, in the first book I wrote about all the things that Jesus did. This second book shifts from Jesus to the Holy Spirit and God's acting through the Spirit-guided apostles. So at the beginning of Acts, we have the disciples sharing their last moments with Jesus, their return to the city of Jerusalem, and then they're gathering together as a community of believers. And at the very core of this group of believers is the 11 and some women and some members of Jesus' family. And together, this group, we are told, devote themselves to prayer. And Peter then, he stands up among them, and he speaks to what we are told are the rest of the believers. And we are told that the believers numbered about 120 people. Now, I don't want to say that this is where it begins, because the roots of our faith go much deeper than this moment. But here at the beginning of the book of Acts, we have a group of about 120 believers in what we would call and come to call Christianity. Believers who would be the ones to establish the church. After the election of one more believer, Matthias, to the group of 12, comes our Pentecost story. This is the story of when they were gathered all in one place. And suddenly there is the sound like the rush of a violent wind, filling the house where they were sitting. And then divided tongues like a fire resting on each of them, and all of them being filled with the Holy Spirit. And from there they begin to speak in many different languages. And something really spectacular must have been going on here. We don't really know what it might have looked like or what it might have sounded like, but the people notice. This sound begins attracting a crowd. The crowd doesn't know what's going on. They are amazed and perplexed. Peter understands his mission 
and begins to speak. He tells the crowd about Jesus. He quotes the prophets, and he interprets for them the scriptures. And today's reading wraps up just a little tiny way through Peter's speech. Peter keeps going at length, publicly pouring out his earnest beliefs. And the crowd is obviously heartened by what they hear because that day, about 3,000 people were baptized. Wow, that's pretty significant growth. And what do those people do? Scripture says they devote themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to breaking of bread and prayer. And so begins the life of the church. I am amazed at how much is the same and how much is different about the church from that moment until now. It's very common in our churches today to hear comments like, that's the way we've always done it. Or, I've been a part of this church for many years and... Like the church is some static entity that has never and should never change. But the church has changed. These first believers met in the temple. They gathered in homes. And later, when the Romans perceived a threat from these Christians, they worshipped in secret and in hiding. It wasn't till hundreds of years later that the people of faith began building buildings to worship in or form groups to govern and rule and make decisions. Denominations were a product of the Reformation some 1,500 years later. Our own denomination, the United Church of Canada, with its structure and governance, has changed in its 91 years and more change is on the way. The face of the church has always been changing, but not the heart of our faith. Those early believers devoted themselves to the teachings of the apostles, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And at the end of the act, chapter two, I love this part. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home. They ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all people. What is the same in our churches today as that same, that first Pentecost Sunday is that we are a people of faith, a people of prayer. What unites us to them is our belief in God, our practice of prayer, and our mission to be God's people in the world today. After worship today, it is hoped that you might all remain to consider the current needs of this pastoral charge as discerned by your Joint Needs Assessment Committee. And as you ponder this report before you, whatever you may decide to do with it, I hope that you will remember what we really have in common with the way it has always been done. That is, that the Church has always been a place of faith and prayer and fellowship, a place to praise God and remember the goodwill of all people. A lot of really hard work has gone into this report. In this interim time in the life of Trinity, it is a time to consider new possibilities and to open yourself to the presence of the Spirit at work in this place. 
Because while Pentecost is a day to celebrate the church and the presence of God's Spirit, it should be noted that the Spirit is not new. The Spirit did not first appear at Pentecost. God's Spirit has been present and at work in every generation and every age. And while we mark the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, because it is on this day that the disciples experience God's Spirit in a new way, and they stopped looking back at what they had lost and began looking forward to who they were and what they were capable of doing. At Pentecost, the believers become very aware of God, the Spirit, the guidance, the presence, the empowerment. And that same Spirit is present here in this church today. And if you doubt that God's Spirit is present here, look, at you, look around at the other believers, people who have come because they have a faith or an yearning for a faith. Read the announcement in the bulletin. See how many groups and events and activities people here are being empowered to be a part of. Look at how the Spirit of God is at work when a group of young people learn something in Sunday school about bottled water use and feel passionate enough about what they have learned to want to share that with their wider faith community, with you. They are showing us that God's Spirit is alive in this place. So this Pentecost Sunday, be like the first believers. Stop looking back at what you have lost. Instead, look at who you are and forward to what you are capable of doing. God's Spirit is at work in this place. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn number one in more voices, so you'll have to use the screens, Let Us Build a House.
God's Spirit has given us life. God's Spirit has given us breath. God's Spirit strengthens our witness. God's Spirit strengthens our mission. Let us give thanks for God's Spirit and offer our gifts to the church. Let us pray together. We bring our gifts to you, O God, in oneness with each other and with the rest of your church. Accept what we offer here as gifts to you and your work in the world. Help us to respond joyfully, share widely, and work tirelessly that these gifts may serve you well. Amen. Today, as each of you entered the church, I'm hoping that you received a drop of water. And on it, it says, I pledge. It was, I believe, in 2006, 10 years ago, that the United Church of Canada, at its general council meeting, in, passed a motion to uh, suggest to our membership that we cease to use bottled water. So that's already been out there for 10 years in the United Church of Canada. Not everybody's aware of that. But today, these young people are bringing this issue before us. They have given you a drop of water. Hopefully, you have a pen in your purse or in your pocket. And if you feel so inclined, please write what you might pledge around the use of bottled water today. And during the singing of the final hymn, they will be collecting your drops of water. According to RT Question More, several water companies in Canada fill their water bottles with tap water from Calgary, Brampton, Vancouver, or Mississauga. Did you get what that really means? Companies are using oil and water to make bottles which one-fourth of the time are filled with tap water. Why not just use a reusable water bottle filled with your own tap water? According to the Business Insider, bottled water costs 2,000 times more than tap water, which we are paying for through our taxes. Why are we spending hard-earned money on, to rebuy our water? 
Water is the basic human right. We are allowing ourselves to think that bottled water is better. Tap water in Toronto is tested every four to six hours. In other places, it's tested at least daily. We are purchasing bottled water, perhaps not realizing that it wastes large amounts of water and oil, pollutes the environment, and the sale of water, which is a basic human right, provides huge profits for large companies. Change for the better is happening. At Surrey Regional High School, water fountains has, have been installed with a digital screen that tells you how many water bottles have been saved by you taking a drink from the fountain instead of buying bottled water. Also, once again, change is happening for the better. A ban on the sale of bottled water has been passed in several Ontario cities, including Burlington, London, Newmarket, Niagara Falls, Oshawa, Peterborough, and Waterloo, and also in British Columbia, Nelson, Victoria, and Vancouver. At the present mo moment, Montreal is debating a ban. Last month, a group proposed to the Charlottetown City Council that Charlottetown become a blue community, an innovative of the Council for Canadians to ban the sale of bottled water. We can make a difference, so help this planet Earth. Please think about a pledge that you might make to lessen your environmental fo footprint. Thank you. Let us gather in prayer. Spirit God, your presence moves us, pushes us, cradles us, and sometimes leads us in surprising new directions. Let your Spirit's presence be felt here that we may be strengthened in our faith and assured that you are as much a part of today's church as you were that event on Pentecost Day. Help us, God, to live truly faithful lives where we do not put convenience over what is right. Help us remember, help us to hear the words that these members of our Sunday School have shared with us today and to act on what we have learned. As we celebrate and rejoice in the signs of spring all around us, flowers and trees budding, temperatures rising, fishing boats on the water, tractors in the fields, let us be mindful that our actions do make a difference to our earth. May our actions be those that keep this world ever green and ever blue. God, we pray that your spirit would be felt by those who today face struggles and challenges. We pray for those who are in hospital or at home, unable to lead the life they would like to. We pray for the bereaved, lonely, depressed, and confused. We hold up to you in prayer today the people of Fort McMurray and surrounding area, yet displaced from their homes. We pray for others in other communities of our country who face similar threats. We pray for today in our own, for other countries of this world where war or famine or continued injustice our daily realities. Help us to help them and not forget about them simply because they no longer make today's headline. Empowered by your spirit, may we always be aware that we are members of the church today. Help us to live lives of faith that make this world a better place for everyone. This we ask in Jesus' name who taught us to pray together saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Let us join in our final hymn number 100 or 601, The Church of Christ in Every Age. The clergy will not be present for your meeting. Uh, we are not involved in the JNAC or, or the search committee process. Um, so we will be turning it over to Phil, Floyd, or oh, Barbara will start. Barbara Prouse, Chair of Council, will begin following the benediction and commissioning. Go now, spirit strengthened in God's way. Go, spirit comforted that you matter and have a purpose. Go, spirit motivated to build a better world. Go, spirit companioned to be the church you were meant to be. Amen. Amen.